Greetings students and welcome back to another video on special relativity. Last time we introduced space-time diagrams and went over some basic concepts like world lines and light lines and light cones. In this video we're going to talk about how space-time diagrams transform as we go from one inertial reference frame to another. Suppose I have a train with a light bulb at the center. This train is 10 meters long and is moving at a velocity v to the right. At each end of the train is a mirror, so the left one is 5 meters from the bulb, and the right one is also 5 meters from the bulb. I'll call the reference frame of this train R'. prime. If I draw the space-time diagram corresponding to this reference frame, I'll have T', prime, my time in the R' prime frame representing the vertical axis, meanwhile my horizontal distance X' prime will be represented on the horizontal axis. Remember that every point on the space-time diagram represents an event at a particular point in space and time. Now the world line of my bulb, which is the same as the path my bulb takes in the space-time diagram, my world line is just a vertical line that overlaps with the t' prime axis. Why is it vertical? Well, it's because in the primed reference frame, or in the reference frame of an observer in the train, my bulb isn't going anywhere, it's just staying at the center. So time keeps advancing and my bulb keeps moving vertically in the space-time diagram, but there's no horizontal movement because the bulb isn't actually moving within the train. Meanwhile, the world lines of my two mirrors are also vertical, because the mirrors are also not going anywhere in the reference frame of the train. However, these vertical world lines are parallel to the world line of the bulb, with one world line being situated at x equals negative 5, the left mirror, and the other being situated at x equals 5, the right mirror. Let's suppose that I turn on my bulb at a time t equals negative 5 light meters. I'll call this event 1. Recall from my previous video that a light meter is the time it takes for light to travel 1 meter, which is roughly 300 millionth of a second. The advantage of using light meters as the unit of time in a space-time diagram is when you write your speed of light, it would just be 1 meter divided by 1 light meter and would have an absolute value of 1. So using light meters as my unit of time scales every velocity according to the speed of light. Now the photons that come out of this light bulb after a time of 5 light meters, that is after we go up by 5 on our space-time diagram vertically, after 5 light meters the photons will obviously advance 5 meters. One photon will move to the right and hit the right mirror right over here at plus 5 meters, while the other photon will advance to the left and hit the left mirror over here at negative 5 meters. When the photon hits the right mirror, I will call that event 2, and when the photon hits the left mirror, I will call that event 3. Both of these mirrors will get hit by their respective photons at time 0. This makes sense, because the speed of light is 1 in our scaled units, light will advance 5 units of distance after 5 units of time. So once my t' prime hits 0, the two photons will hit the mirrors that are 5 meters apart from the light bulb that the photons first came out of. You can see that the world lines of the photons, or the light lines as they're sometimes called, are angled at 45 degrees relative to the vertical axis. That's because the tangent of 45 degrees, or pi by 4 radians, is 1, and that's equal to the speed of light in my scaled units where my time is in light meters. You can see here that the events 2 and 3 occur at the same time t' prime equals 0, according to an observer in the reference frame r'. prime. In other words, events 2 and 3 are simultaneous in the reference frame r' prime because they occur at the same value of t'. prime. Now what happens after these photons hit the two mirrors? Well, they bounce back. So another 5 light meters later, the photons each travel back 5 meters to the light bulb. When both the photons reach the light bulb at the end, I'll call that event 4. So this space-time diagram was pretty straightforward. It described the events of the photons hitting the mirrors and bouncing back to the original light source. Pretty simple stuff. But now let's take this a step further and see what happens in the space-time diagram in the reference frame R, which corresponds to the reference frame of an outside observer standing on the ground. We'll also suppose that the observers in R and R' prime synchronize their clocks to zero when the light bulb crosses the spatial coordinate x equals zero in R. So if we draw the space-time diagram of this observer, I'll now have the unprimed coordinates t on the vertical axis and x on the horizontal axis. The big question now becomes how do I translate the events 1 to 4 on the space-time diagram from the reference frame r' to the reference frame r? Well, let's take things one step at a time. You can see that according to an observer in the reference frame r, the light bulb travels at a velocity v to the right. 
So this means the world line of my light bulb in the reference frame R will be this diagonal line on the corresponding space-time diagram. Of course, as we discussed in the previous video, the tangent of this angle from the light bulb's world line and the vertical axis will be the velocity v of the light bulb. Going back now to the space-time diagram in the reference frame R prime, you can see that the world line of the light bulb coincided with the T prime axis. What this means is that this diagonal line I've drawn in the space-time diagram for the reference frame R, this diagonal line represents the T prime axis according to the reference frame R, according to an observer in the reference frame R. This means that event 1 will be somewhere here on this diagonal line, just like how it was on the T' prime line in our R' prime space-time diagram. The next thing I'll do is that I'll add the world lines of the two mirrors. Since both mirrors are traveling at a velocity of v to the right, just like the light bulb, the world lines of the two mirrors in my reference frame R space-time diagram, the world lines will both be parallel to the world line of the light bulb. They'll have the same slope, but will just be displaced a bit to the sides. The world line on the left will again correspond to the left mirror, and the world line on the right will again correspond to the right mirror. So now my observer in the reference frame R sees event 1 occurring. That is, the light bulb turns on and fires two photons, one going to the right and the other going to the left. The photon on the right will move to the right mirror as such, and the photon on the left will move to the left mirror as such. The critical thing to keep in mind here, and this is absolutely essential, the critical thing with these photons is that their world lines will be at an angle of 45 degrees relative to the vertical, just like their world lines were in the reference frame R prime. Why is that? Well, it all comes from the second postulate of special relativity, which we discussed in our intro video. The speed of light is constant in all inertial reference frames. Therefore, if the world line of light, or the light line, makes a 45 degree angle in the reference frame R prime, it will make that same angle in the reference frame R, no exceptions. As we've discussed, the speed of light is represented by the tangent of 45 degrees on the space-time diagram, so the angle of the light line will be the same regardless of whether I'm the observer in R prime or the observer in R, just by virtue of the rules governing special relativity. And because the light lines are still at 45 degrees, even according to an observer in the reference frame R, the light line on the left will hit the left mirror over here, while the light line on the right will hit the right mirror over here. And just like before, when it hits the right mirror, that I will call event number 2. And when it hits the left mirror, that I will call event number 3. Now, do you notice something peculiar? Well, you should, because in the reference frame R prime, if I go up, I said earlier that events 2 and 3 are simultaneous. They happen at the same value of T prime. But look what happens in the reference frame R. Event 2 occurs somewhere up here at a time T2. Meanwhile, event 3 occurs somewhere down here at a time t3. Clearly, according to an observer in the reference frame R, the events 2 and 3 are not simultaneous. And this is the relativity of simultaneity. Two events that may be perceived as simultaneous in one reference frame may not be simultaneous in another reference frame. We have now demonstrated this concept with space-time diagrams. Now why does this happen intuitively? Well, you have the photon on the left trying to hit the mirror on the left. However, as time goes on, the left mirror gets closer to the left photon just by virtue of how it's traveling. And that's why according to somebody in the reference frame R, the left photon hits the mirror first. Meanwhile, the right mirror gets further away from the right photon as time goes on, leading the right photon to reach the right mirror later on. So that's why event 2 ends up occurring after event 3 according to an observer in the R reference frame. Now just like how events 2 and 3 were joined by the x prime axis in the R prime space-time diagram, we will once again join them together in our unprime space-time diagram to create our transformed x prime axis. Now note that this drawing is a little bit off because the x prime and t prime axes should intersect at the origin, but it's just not exactly drawn to scale here, so do excuse that for now. And finally, after the photons hit the two mirrors, they will bounce back. And again, this bounce back will be with a 45 degree world line because the speed of light remains the same relative to all inertial reference frames. And when the photons bounce back and reach the light bulb, that will be event 4, which once again will be on the T prime axis. 
So using our thought experiment and applying the postulates of special relativity, we have finally created a space-time diagram that is transformed from another inertial reference frame, which means that if I have a reference frame R prime that is traveling at a velocity V relative to R, the space-time diagram of R prime in the reference frame R will have its axes diagonally tilted like so. And the degree of this diagonal tilt will depend on the relative velocity V of R prime relative to R. Anyway, that should do it for this video on space-time diagram transformations. In the next lesson, we're going to talk about space-time intervals. I'd like to thank the following patrons for their support, and if you enjoyed the video, feel free to like and subscribe. This is the Faculty of Khan, signing out.